In this lesson, I want to take a look at an example of a phishing scam email, which I received. And this is an email I, for, for a moment, I was fooled by it. Because this thing looks exactly like an email from Amazon.com, but it's not. So, if you're not familiar with the term phishing scam, just very briefly, it is a type of scam that is it's very common on the, to see it in email, via email, but it's done via various, various methods. Uh, if you are a part of a social networking site like Twitter or Facebook or any number of other sites, those sites sometimes are used to spread phishing scams as well. It's not a fault of those sites at all any more than it's a fault of email for being used as a vector, if you will, a pathway that these phishing scams can arrive and get to you. So you need to be aware of what they are and how to deal with them and how to recognize the signs of them. And that's what I'm going to show you in this lesson. And uh, basically, of course, what happens if you fall, you fall for a phishing scam, it's basically they're trying to get some kind of information out of you, usually something uh, anything from, on the mild end of things, a, an email address and a password to get into an account, or on the extreme end of things, something like a credit card number, a bank car, a bank number, account number, or a uh, social security number, or uh, local equivalent overseas. So basically, any of these things that are can be used for some degree of identity theft, and you don't want that to happen. So let's take a look at this email and how I was able to recognize that it was a scam. And basically, so it says Thunderbird, but the, everything I'm talking about here will apply equally no matter what email program you use and no matter what you, whether you use Windows or Mac or any other kind of computer for that matter. So basically, what we see here is a typical Amazon email. Now you may notice if you have ever bought anything from, from Amazon, there's usually an Amazon logo and everything, and right here it says Amazon logo, Amazon.com logo, and up here there's a message about how blocked images have been blocked in the message, and that's, that's a security measure which is fortunately in place for this program, and it's something that's in a lot of different programs, not just Thunderbird, and basically it's blocking some of the remote images that are loading off of the website. Now, so normally you would see the Amazon logo if that wasn't being blocked. That's not one of the ways that I recognize that this was a fake scam email, but I just wanted to point that out in case you were thinking to yourself, that doesn't quite look like an Amazon email. It does, it just looks like one that has had the images blocked, and that's how they usually appear in my inbox, actually. So it looks really no different on the surface. But here's a few things. First thing that I noticed, now this is not going to apply to everybody, but in my particular case, I actually use, for security reasons, I use a different email address, technically an alias to each of my email addresses, that instead of my real email addresses, when I'm signing up for, for accounts with different services, and that allows me to control spam and recognize certain things like this. So it says my email address is worth at worthgodma.com thing is, while that is a real email address, that is not the one I use at Amazon. So that was perhaps the first thing that I noticed, but there's a number of clues that you can spot here. Some of them are going to be common. One of them in particular is going to be common to pretty much all phishing scams, but other ones are going to be common to a lot of them. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. So let's take a look. First thing beyond my email address is related to my email address, but it says, thanks for your order worth at worthgovern.com. It doesn't say my name, it says my email address. That should be suspicious right there. Amazon always addresses you by your first name whenever it writes an email to you. It's just trying to be personable and personalize it. So they write, they put your, it would, should say, thanks for your order, worth. This would be a red flag right there, the fact that it's addressing me by my address, my email, rather than my name. In the case of Amazon specifically, that is not normal for them. Another thing, order grand total, $50.99. Subtotal of items, $94.99. Total before tax, $92.99. Sales tax, zero. Total order for the order is $20.99. Following items were ordered, price $70.99. None of these things add up. The math is completely wrong. It's just, they just apparently put in just random numbers 
instead of the real number. So that it literally does this this email literally doesn't add up. So that's another really a fairly obvious clue if you're if you're paying attention to the email. Now here's the biggest one. Okay. Now for this part of the lesson, I want you to take a look down here. On this bar down at the bottom of the window, the very bottom of the window is called a status bar. If it's not visible on your web browser, try looking in the view menu and look for status bar and make sure it's checked so that it appears. This is a very important thing and it's not always turned on. I use it constantly and this is what made it, if all, if all the clues I've already mentioned, like the price is adding up, not adding up, my name not being my email address, my email address being the wrong email address and all these things, these were all clues, but the really definitive thing is what shows up here. When you put your pointer over a link, it doesn't use a status bar. Instead, it uses something called a tooltip. A little sort of word bubble will appear. And that essentially gives you the same information that the status bar does. It just does it in a little bubble. But aside from that, it's the same idea. So while I'm talking here for a moment here, I just want, to, want you to keep your eyes down on the status bar here, right where I'm pointing, gesturing with my mouse right now, right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to move my mouse pointer over up above here to this link up here, but I want, again, keep your eye down here, okay? So I put my mouse pointer over this link, and it's supposedly to Amazon.com, which, by the way, another there's another mistake. Amazon.com is what it should say, but they had a typo and they forgot the dot. Another little thing that you would not see in a legitimate Amazon email. But if you, put, if you look at, your, at the status bar at the bottom of the window, it says http colon slash slash barnsoftware dot ru colon eighty eighty slash index dot php question mark pid equals fourteen slash now does that look like that's on amazon.com it's not it's on some website that's apparently apparently in russia dot ru indicates russia so if I put my link, my pointer over the link, Amazon.com, it does not link to Amazon.com. It goes to some place called barnsoftware.ru. I have not clicked on this link. If you get an email like this, it's a scam. Don't click on it. You don't know what you're going to get when you get there. It may try to ask you for your account information or something similar, or it may just try to infect your computer or something. Either way, you don't want to go there. Now, the same thing, if I put my pointer over any of these links, keep your eye on the bottom, on the status bar there again, you'll notice that all these links point to that barnsoftware.ru website, which has nothing to do with Amazon, despite the fact that they claim that they're from Amazon. So if I put my pointer over your account, that should go to amazon.com slash account, I believe it is, certainly something on amazon.com. Learn more, again, it's going to barnsoftware.ru. So that's the main thing I wanted to point out to you. Just kind of pick apart this, this email and use it as an example so that you can see for yourself an example of a, of a phishing scam email, and hopefully this will help you avoid similar problems in the future.